Hello, and welcome to episode 18 of the Brain Cancer Podcast. Now, what I want to cover in this episode is a topic that I've actually covered once before at some point last year. I don't remember the exact episode, but I think it's very relevant, especially in this day and age that we are in right now. Also, I am trying a slightly different microphone setup, so hopefully the audio and my voice come across a little bit better. And that's something I've really been trying to work on, and I appreciate you all bearing with me as I go through this. Before we get into the topic for today, I just wanted to let you all know that my next MRI is on March the 10th, and then I'll get the results two days after that. So I don't have to worry about being back at the imaging center or the hospital for a little over three weeks now. Personally, I can't believe that it's been over four years already, and I'm still going strong. And I think that's definitely related to some of the things that I do in my daily life, as well as things that I've learned and experienced over the past four, five, six years. If anything, having this brain cancer experience has made me into a better person in the long run. Obviously, it's difficult to live with this on a day-to-day basis, but there are so many positives that have come out of this. I don't know where I would be in my life without something like this coming along and forcing me to stop, slow down, and look at everything. I just wanted to provide a quick update, and now we will get into the show for real. Now, the topic that I wanted to cover today is all about mental health. And as you all know, we are nearing one year into this pandemic. It has definitely made our lives much more difficult as a result of lockdowns and social distancing and all these other terms that we really never want to have to hear again. But this is the situation that we're in. And in addition to taking care of others, we have to take care of ourselves mentally as well. Now, I plan to break this up into three different sections where I want to talk about what you can do as the brain cancer patient, what you can do if you're a family member or a caregiver, and then finally, if you or your partner or spouse, whatever it might be, how a brain cancer diagnosis can completely change the entire dynamic of your relationship. And I do think it's important that we look at all three of these sort of on their own, but you can take things from one and certainly apply them to another. And this is just meant to be some tips and some things that I have learned And you can adapt it to whatever suits you best and whatever helps with your mental health. As the patient, there are a few key topics that I wanted to talk about. The first one is to seek out a therapist. You can talk to your social worker at the hospital, or you can look on Psychology Today And they have a find a therapist in my area option. And you can filter it by medical condition, location, and whether or not they accept your insurance, which is very important as well. I know a lot of people are hesitant at first, but I promise you, even if you don't specifically spend every session talking about your diagnosis, Just being able to talk with a third party and express how you're feeling and what you're going through and talking to somebody that can guide you through your decision process and make you actually question why you are or are not doing certain things, it is so helpful. 
because of the whole pandemic situation, I see mine every two weeks and we do it online and I have a microphone and I have a webcam. So there's no problems there. And it saves me from having to actually go there, which saves me at least an hour of travel time. So that's nice. There are obviously a lot of therapists out there. So you may have to go through one or two or three to find the one that works best for you. I feel very lucky that I found mine on Psychology Today, and she's wonderful. I mean, she'll just sit there and listen to me ramble on for 45 minutes about what I've done for the past two weeks or whatever else is going on. I might not even get to any of the current stuff that's going on. But when I'm done with our session, I just feel so much better just that I was talking. I think that's also why I really like doing this as well, because it really helps me get out some of my own anxieties and feelings about going through this. And that leads me into one of my next points, where you can create a blog vlog or use your phone and download a voice recorder app. Just take your phone out and record yourself whatever you're feeling at the time. It doesn't have to be any set time limit. It can be 30 seconds. It can be five minutes. Or you can do the same thing with a diary. You know, the old paper and pen works just as well. It doesn't have to be one or the other either. You can do both. There are a few other things that I think are really important for me. The first one is that I get enough sleep. I try and get at least eight hours a night. After you've gone through this and you're on various medications like Keppra, fatigue just becomes a normal part of your life. So don't fight it if you have to even take a nap in the afternoon, because I certainly do. And your body and your brain need rest at night to recover, and if you're doing chemo or radiation or immunotherapy, while you're resting, your brain is still fighting. So never forget that. Just as important as getting enough sleep is getting a good diet going. I'm not talking about like a traditional diet. What I mean is eating properly and ensuring that your body gets enough nutrients. Each one of us has a different diet, and what works for me might not work for you. What you do might not work for me. So it's important that you find something that you're happy with and that makes you feel good, but it's not just junk food, because garbage in equals garbage out. And if you have the proper nutrition, you're going to have more energy throughout the day, You'll be able to sleep better at night, and you'll be able to do more actual activities either around the house or outside, which is one of my final points. Take advantage of your hobbies. Whatever your hobbies might be, give yourself some downtime to just relax, forget about the whole brain cancer, and just do something that you personally enjoy, whether it's art taking a walk, playing video games, whatever it might be. I do all three of those, so that was just what came to my mind. But it's such an important part of my life is that I don't get bogged down and I make sure that I give myself plenty of time. Finally, don't be afraid to take advantage of some of the other resources out there. There are various charities around the world and groups like the American Brain Tumor Association that will work with you to help you get whatever resources you might need. And they can put you in contact with local people and can help you find a therapist. So I guess to sum that up, it really is knowing how to take care of yourself by reaching out and doing proper self-care, both physically and mentally. Next up, what if you are a family member or are the caregiver? In my experience, I think 
it can often be more difficult on the family member or the caregiver. You can feel very helpless in the situation. Depending on the status of the person that you're caring for, you may or may not be able to do certain things, just as well as they may not be able to do certain things. It really can be overwhelming when you consider having to go to and from appointments, talking with social workers, talking with doctors, trying to carry around binders of medical records and doing everything you can for your loved one. Just as it's important for the patient, you need to take time for yourself as well. If you're in a situation where you have multiple people, creating a schedule is going to help all around, I promise you. Just as an example, if you take care of them Monday, Wednesday, Friday, somebody else does Tuesday, Thursday, and then a different person takes care of the weekends, then you have three different people who are all responsible for taking care of tasks, whether it's dispensing medication, making sure that they get fed, and just other quality of life responsibilities. Not overextending yourself is just as important to the person that you're caring for. If you are mentally burned out, then there's more of a chance that you could make some sort of mistake, or just the general stress of being in the situation might make for some short tempers. And just like for the patient, I will definitely recommend seeking out a therapist, either just for you, or if you have a few family members, you can go together as a group. Maybe you can't go together in person right now, but you could do group calls. You'll just have to figure that out with a therapist when you get in touch with one. But like I said, sometimes it can be more difficult on the caregiver side because it can be frustrating when you're doing everything that you can, but it might not look like there's any change because sometimes when we're getting better, it's going to be slow. It's going to require patience. And if you have somebody that can guide you through some of these really difficult periods, you'll be in a much better place because of going to this therapist. It certainly doesn't have to be the same one that the patient is seeing. Your needs and worries are going to be different from theirs. So that's why I say, Take care of yourself as well. You can't neglect yourself both physically and mentally because that person is relying on you as well. You all need to work together for a common goal. Do not forget the importance of self-care. Finally, I wanted to cover what can be a very difficult time. Now, I've experienced this and seen this quite a bit recently, especially over the past year, where I've seen relationships that just, they don't fall apart, but they become so strained that they just end up falling apart. Having a brain cancer diagnosis is obviously life-changing, and it will be just as impactful for your partner as well. All of a sudden, they have to think about their future. What are they going to do if something happens to you? And then you have other issues come up, like financial and possibly child care related. I do not have any children. I can only imagine how much more difficult that would be when there are children involved or in the unfortunate circumstance where the child is the patient and it's become so difficult on the parents. Now, for the third time in a row, I am going to recommend therapy. But more specifically, I think that if it's in a relationship, seeking out a couple's counselor 
would be just as, if not more, beneficial. And that doesn't mean that you each can't have your own separate therapists that you can talk about completely separate from the other person. But if you have a session together with a therapist that gets to know you, you'll have the unbiased third-person perspective on what you're going through, and they will be able to guide you on where you each want this relationship to go and what might be best for the short and long term. Some of them might work, some of them might not. That's just the reality of the situation that we're in right now. There are other things that you can do as a couple where you can both get a break from thinking about brain cancer and treatments and everything else that comes with it. Because we're in the middle of a pandemic, we'll have to get a little bit creative right now. But I think having some sort of couples activities that you both enjoy or that have some sort of special meaning to the two of you can be a great distraction. Not so much a distraction, but more of a bonding experience where you're experiencing some of the best parts or some of the most memorable parts of your relationship. Think back to whatever the first movie you saw was. You can order some food or make some food. That's also an option. And if you don't own the movie, you can rent it or stream it from wherever and do just like a couple's date night. It really depends on what your relationship is like, but there's plenty of other activities that you may enjoy as well. In addition to doing like a date night, do some activities that you both enjoy. Maybe you both really like playing video games, so get some two-player video games. Board games are wonderful. I'm sure everybody has their own favorite board game or card game. If I can recommend one series of card games, which is very easy to play, to pick up, to teach to young kids, it's called Flux, F-L-U-X-X. There are many, many different theme decks, and I'm sure that there's one out there that you will like. There's Pirate Flux, Monty Python Flux, Cartoon Network Flux, Zombie Flux, Cthulhu Flux. There's probably at least 40 different types right now. And you can combine the decks to make your own sort of custom games, which will go a little bit longer. Maybe I'm just focusing on things that I really like doing, but I've always been a big board games, card games, video games kind of fan. Because I like the thinking and strategy aspect. Not everybody is going to like that, and that's fine. Just any game, any activity, anything that you both enjoy doing in the company of each other is worth doing. The important part is that you are doing something together as a couple, which is an escape from worrying about brain cancer and caregiving. And it is a good mental break as well as something to help strengthen your relationship. Not everyone is going to work, and unfortunately, we know that's just how life is. Just because a relationship is going through a turbulent time does not mean that it has to end or that it's over, or if it does end, you can never be friends again. Because you've already gone through something together, which will still form a lifelong bond, which is also very important. And you don't want to lose somebody like that. So I think that about does it for this episode. All I had was some notes on a piece of paper, and I just kind of went off the top of my head with most of them. I was drawing from just personal experiences and things that I have seen and heard of throughout my time with this disease. I want to say thank you all so much for listening, and I hope that I can be of some help. 
It has been a very difficult year for all of us. The light is visible. We can see it. We are almost out of this pandemic. We are so close. Stay positive. We will get through this as patients, family members, caregivers, and partners. If you would like to send me an email, you can always email me at braincancerpodcast at gmail.com. You can like the page on Facebook at facebook.com slash braincancerpodcast. You can follow me on Twitter at braincancerpod. Check out the website at braincancerpodcast.com, which I promise I will update. I'm getting there. And do not hesitate to reach out for anything that you may need. I appreciate every single one of you so much. You have all been such a positive impact on my life, and I can't say thank you enough. I hope you all have a great day or night. Once again, thank you so much, and I'll talk to you again soon. Bye. Bye.